Welcome to the 39th episode of Downtime Podcast. Today you have Elisa and... Jeremy. Hello. Whoop whoop. <laughs> uh, and today is a very exciting episode, which we're going to get into later. But here's a clue. For now, it it's February. That's the biggest clue. And that's it. That- <laughs> That's all yeah. you're going to get. That's all you're going to get right uh, now. It's kind of so. like the second episode of the Outside Podcast, I guess. Or third. I forget which one it was. <laughs> yeah. That's all you're going to get yeah, right now. <laughs> that's, that's the clue. If you can't figure that out, then that's... you don't listen to our podcast. I don't know. <laughs> or they just join. That's, that's true. You don't listen to it because you just joined. Just... I didn't mean that in a condescending way. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. New listeners. I know. Welcome. I mean, Old listeners. I mean, hello again. Yes. I mean, I literally spent, like, five minutes of last podcast telling people to never listen to the first episode. Oh, that's so true. We should, we should not be condescending would, to people. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be surprising <clears throat> if they never listened to the second episode either at yeah. this point. But, hello, everyone. Um, I At this point, you may be listening to us on a different platform. That's because we're officially on a new database called Stitcher. So if you have the Stitcher app on your phone or you listen to it online, that is another website where you can listen to our podcast. Yay. Taking taking the internet over. I didn't even know that. Well, Stitcher's cool. There's a lot of great um, podcasting apps that aren't like necessarily the built-in Apple app, for example. So we're glad to reach um, other platforms. Wow. Everything is on here. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Lisa. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I, I, I like to thank the Academy <laughs> <laughs> for all that, all of my accomplishments. <laughs> na, 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 na. That's your, that's your playoff music. You get the graduation theme. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I have a little bit to talk about with video games. I mean, as far as I can go without really spoiling stuff, and I'm sure you have a few things to talk yeah. about as well. All right, so let's get to it. Um, nothing much has changed on my end. I'm still playing near Automata. I've finished ending B. I'm in the middle of ending C, and literally in like the five ten minutes after you finish ending b any near automata fan knows exactly what i'm talking about some crazy shit happens and my mind's blown and a new character is also introduced and i don't necessarily know if i like this new character yet the new character has a lot of potential but um i don't think i've gone that far yet and honestly, Jeremy, that's all I can really say without spoiling the game okay. for you. Yeah, and if you yeah. guys want to know what she's talking about, you can also go to the YouTube channel <laughs> on triangle-c.blog and ch- ch- check out her latest video on the two endings for Nier because they're pretty cool. I didn't watch them personally yeah, because I don't want it to spoil for myself, but I already know what the video is about like context-wise, but not really like, yeah. like plot-wise. So if you, do want, yeah, if you did finish exactly. the game and you want to know Elise's thoughts and you want to see her... React to it. Watch that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, cause I, cause I really, I seriously re- react to all of them because I mean, I, like I, like I said before, this is the first time I've played a video game that has multiple endings, but it's done in such a way where the multiple endings are different perspectives of the same situation with different characters. So it's like a vantage point type situation, and I'm really enjoying it. And you know, some. Just, like, a lot of crazy shit's happening right now. Yeah, after ending B is really where the game picks up, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it already picked up during this plot twist in ending B. But um, ending C is where it's at. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and I really, really wish I could say more about that. But that would just be outright spoiling it. Um, aside from that, um, everything's still pretty chill. And uh, the soundtrack still sounds really good. The game is still gray. Uh, I would, I would <laughs> hope so. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and lastly, I have Shadow of the Colossus, the new remake done by I, I think Blue Point Games, Ooh. and I have it. 
Yep, I don't have the 4K version because I don't have a PS4 Pro, but I have the regular version, and I have a feeling I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna get into the storyline yet, although the game's short, but I'm gonna probably play the first, you know, hour or so this weekend just to um, test the waters and see what's up. Cool, cool. So, yes, so I am excited to play that, and... Also, I have officially bought Yakuza 5 for PS3. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, that's going to be my game for March. Did you buy it digitally or did you buy it physically? Um, so it's an interesting thing with this specific copy of Yakuza. Uh, Kevin explained it to me. So for yakuza 5 it is only available digitally for ps3 oh and if you want if you want a physical copy they did not localize an english physical copy of the game you can only get a japanese version of it okay oh okay that makes although sense. i'm gonna play this right now um the way that they ported yakuza um yakuza 3 to 5 for ps3 like way mm-hmm. in the past it actually like it only makes me even more convinced that they're definitely going to do remakes for Yakuza 3 and 5. Okay. Like, I like when I realized that Yakuza 5 never had a physical English copy, I was like, oh, God, they, there's no way they're not jumping on this bandwagon. Yeah. And so, I'm all for it. Like, do it. <laughs> yeah. I, let's yeah, go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I don't care if people say they're cash grabbing. Like, give it to me. Just let me play it. <laughs> oh, they have a great reason to cash grab. They're building the fandom. They're building the international fandom yeah. like better than ever. So they have to do these types of things. They either have to do these types of things or they have to eventually release Yakuza 5, a physical copy in English. But if you're going to do but it's like one of those things where if you're going to go that far, you might as well just update and remaster Yakuza 5 as well. So I'd like to think that we're helping uh, them push that. Let's face it, guys. We're going to have a Yakuza 6 preview podcast. I mean, Jeremy and I haven't talked about it yet. I just announced it right at this yep. instant. But there's but there's no way we're not going to have one. <laughs> and there's no way we're not going to not talk about the game. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Which, by the, which, by the way, before you get into your stuff, I might as well announce this right now. Um, if you were Jeremy and I last week and you were upset by this news possibly crying um yakuza 6 did get pushed by a month yeah so that kind of changes our plans a little bit like scheduling wise for games because we actually planned out we planned way in advance to do this next month march like to do like a little yeah little spoiler not really spoiler cast like just something special but um we had well, there's a lot of plans we had that basically aren't happening in yeah, March. Yeah. And I was so, really looking forward to this, but now we have to push it back to April. Jeremy and I are going to play the demo, so we'll definitely talk about right. that, but um but still we're uh um we're very supportive of anything that will make this a great game, but still, I, uh, that doesn't erase my sadness. Yeah, when I saw the news, I was actually kind of sad because I'm really, I was really, <laughs> really looking forward to this game, and I still am. It's just, yeah, there's a little hole in my heart that should have, that should not be there because I wish that Yakuza was pulled forward by a Japanese sword. Yeah, stab. I didn't. I really, really didn't expect them to delay the game. Games are always delayed, right. but I was shocked to hear this. I was like, "What? Really?" Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I'm, ass- <laughs> I'm assuming they're finalizing the localizations because there's really not much enhancements of the game because you're still releasing the same Japanese game as it was um, released last year. So really the only thing you're finishing are translations. Yeah. I mean, given we, we're not experts on what's happening, but uh, we'd like, of course, speculation is all we're doing, but still you can only speculate uh, that the translation is going forward a little bit more since this is a huge game. There's a lot more content than zero in this game, so I heard it's a, yeah. I heard this is a longer. I think game. this is the biggest one. Personally, I think this is oh, the biggest Yakuza game with the amount of content in here. Oh. Like, 
there's no way that this isn't like the biggest Yakuza game ever. As is it, it is oh, yeah. Kiryu's last story, and as we mentioned before, so this has got to be go harder. Yeah, go exactly. Home. Like they, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure they pushed this engine to its limits. So when the English translation team got it, I think there was like probably like five to eight times more co- like English or like dialogue that has to be translated than the, oh, than previous definitely. titles. So. Yeah, I mean, I thought that Zero was a heavily packed content game, and it was like all the translations were perfect, and like they they didn't miss a beat with any translation. Nothing was misspelled. So I'm sure that uh, Yakuza Six has to go through a lot of QA and a lot of like, you know, just like the standard stuff when localizing, uh, yeah, localizing a game to the West. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure for a lot of people, like, they are just f- now finding out about the series, like Yakuza Six. So like, oh, there's like five more games. Before this one, well, technically six more games before it. So everyone's trying to figure out um, if they want to buy this or not. Some breaking news, actually, Lisa. Um, Yakuza 6 Premium Edition was pulled off of Amazon. Really? Like, like, like in the past 12 hours, as of today, February 7th. Holy holy crap. Does that mean it no longer exists? It's not that. I think they just sold out, maybe temporarily. Okay. On Amazon, this is currently unavailable. Okay. I actually changed my um, pre-order f- to GameStop because I actually want to pick it up instead of having it delivered oh, yes. to my house, and then it's just sitting on my porch. I, I mentioned this to you personally, Lisa, but t- for the listeners, I actually switched over to to, g- to GameStop, and I think I just nipped it in the bud since there's a lot of people right now that are trying to get the premium edition, premium edition but they can't oh, on Amazon. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, like, damn, I ordered the premium edition back in August of 2017, so I'm actually kind of happy that I was able to still get it through GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> um, some other bit of news. Did you know that Yakuza 4 and 5 are for PS Now, or they're available on PS Now right now? Really? Yeah, so if you have um, that service... You can play both 4 and 5 on your PS4 through PS Now. That's pretty good. I mean, basically, folks, the, this delay, you got to finish at least one new game or start a game for Yakuza. Send us your Yakuza questions at triangle-c.blog. I really, really, really want more questions about Yakuza. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, folks, this is like if I ever needed to pitch something in my life, this is the perfect time to start up a yakuza game i know all of you folks are playing monster hunter world and that game has no storyline that is a multiplayer (laughs) game and it's a multiplayer game to level up and um have better armor and be the best monster hunter in the world but if you're looking for a storyline game this is it this is like go for it like this is it (laughs) yeah no seriously like this is one of the most cinematic games i've ever played and I pitched this so hard to Elisa. I was like, you got to play this game so badly. And once we did, we couldn't get out of that world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Come April, we're going to get sucked in again, Elisa. We're going to be sitting next to each other for the special, special thing that we're going to be doing when we're playing that game. So I know. You'll see, listeners. Yeah. You'll see. This is gonna be- listeners, viewers, watchers. Yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. That being said, what are you up to, Jeremy? <laughs> Playing Tomb Raider still. Yeah. Great game so far. Are you still having the uh, same issues you had? Uh, what did I say? You said something along the lines of it was kind of leveling out a bit. Oh, right, right, right. Um, I haven't plateaued in the game yet as far as, like, comfortability. Um, I think I'm actually almost halfway. I think there's a few more areas that I haven't unlocked yet mm-hmm. because the overworld map seems pretty big yeah so i'm still trying to traverse and go through the story it's still a like heavily linear game but there are a lot of open world aspects as i mentioned last week so i'm looking forward to just continuing the story because i think the story is very interesting with a lot of religious overtones so i think that's kind of cool too yeah that's that's Um, really interesting yeah yeah it's it's great and you can't go wrong with crystal dynamics shout out to them redwood city what's up so gonna see what happens in the rest of the game but i'm almost a quarter of the i'm almost halfway through uh yeah no that's it that's all i have to say about it so far um actually i kind of want to talk about something that happened today yes go for it yeah so this morning i got to my desk well let's let's backtrack a bit i was talking to a coworker yesterday about 
um, the Nintendo Switch because we actually are gonna have like a kind of like office tournament kind of thing oh, on Friday. Oh, that's exciting! Which game? Mario Kart. Okay. And I was like, oh, I was really excited because I get. I like. I really like Mario Kart, and I'm not the best at Mario Kart, but in the office, I'm the best. So I can. I'm really excited to <laughs> <laughs> to beat a lot of people. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm not. I'm not bragging. Okay. Uh, I'm just. I'm just stating a fact. Gotta. Gotta be proud. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be proud. Um. So I was talking to my coworker, and he was telling me that whenever he buys a console, especially like a handheld console. He likes to buy two of them, one for himself and one for a friend to play with them. Like, cause he wants to, um, whenever he talks to someone, they don't always have the same console he does. Yeah. So he wants to be able to share the experience with that person instead of having them just play by themselves. Like he wants to share like a co-op experience. Okay. I was like, oh, that's really nice of you because he told me that he played, um, yeah, he owns like the PS Vita and he, he bought two of them because he wanted anyone like who loved video games to play with him because like he didn't want to be alone when playing um certain games because he felt like some games deserve to have like a more co-op experience and i agree with him i think that's true uh, in previous podcasts i mentioned you know my brother and i played a lot of co-op games growing up and it was a lot more fun playing a game with another person than playing it by yourself yeah so this morning well yesterday he said that he's gonna buy the Nintendo Switch, two of them, and I was like, you're crazy. I'm sure the person at Target's going to be like, what are you doing? Why are you buying two Switches? <laughs> but um, this morning, I came to my desk, and there was a Switch on my desk that said, borrow me with a copy of um, uh, Mario Kart. I was like, oh, that's really nice. And I, and I asked him, oh, yeah, I'd like to, can I take it home tonight and like, try it out? He's like, yeah, sure, sure. I was like, oh, that's really nice of you. Like, It was nice that, he, in a way, like he chose me to be the friend to borrow the console. Yeah. And I felt really good about that. So I went through my day and I was thinking about the Switch. I was like, oh, I can't wait to play it when I get home. Um, I get to my desk and there's another note from the same person on my desk. And it's turned over. But I could clearly see that it was written in Sharpie. And I was like, okay. So I pick it up. And it said, dear Jeremy, the Nintendo Switch is actually yours for you to keep. Wait, forever? Yes, forever. And he gave me some guidelines. He said... Once you, once I give it to you, it's yours. Do not give it back to me because I won't take it back. You can keep it. You can sell it. But whatever you do with it, I want you to cherish it. And I was like, holy crap. Oh. This is the nicest guy in the world right now. Like, oh, my God. And I gave him, like, a big hug after. I was like, oh, my God. Thank you so much. And he's like, yeah, you're welcome. And I asked him, like, why me? Like, what did I do to you that you deserve this? He's like, well, after talking to you last night about the Nintendo Switch I don't know. I just thought that of the two consoles that I bought, you would be the one to cherish it the most. I was like, oh my god, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> Holy crap, folks. Jeremy has a Nintendo Switch officially. You can and play The I Legend know, and of I, Zelda now. I, yeah, I know, right? Oh so, my god. I, I talked about before being against the Switch heavily, but now <laughs> I was I was forced fed a Switch. So I'm not against it. I'm going to keep it. For the record, I'm going to keep it. I really oh, like god. the Switch. I've don't don't <laughs> sell it. Oh my god! That would be no, really I, I, already, I I've already bought excess. Yeah, no. <laughs> the, he, on his guidelines, he put he put uh, you can sell it if you want. And I was like, I'm not gonna sell it, dude. Yeah. I want to keep it. Thank you. That would be a terrible so decision. I, oh yeah, totally. So immediately after I got the note, I I bought Mario Kart for the for the console. I bought it digitally. I'm trying to. I'm actually doing something with the the Switch. I want to buy all my games digitally. Because I don't want to carry the, the cartridges around with me. Makes sense. Unless it's a game I feel like I want to like share with someone, then I'll do that. But uh, yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not going to sell it because I already bought a case. I bought like a screen protector and I bought a little SD card for it from Amazon that are coming oh, in the mail. Oh, that's so, so exciting. Oh my God. I know. I'm so happy so now, for you. When you come... can you, Thanks. Can you, tell the, when you come... can you tell me who the coworker is? I'll delete them from the edit. Okay. You can, you can bleep me out. Yeah. I, I know. I know, right? He is such a sweetheart. <laughs> oh my god. He I know. <laughs> Hey, let me read you exactly the note word for word. Oh my god. Because he, it was the he, cutest thing. He is genuinely one of the, like, honestly, when I used to work at that job, he was 
Oh, he's so nice. He's so wonderful. Yeah. He is salt of the earth. That man is a godsend. Oh my god. So his his note says, "Dear Jeremy, the Nintendo Switch is actually yours, a gift from me." Aww. But I didn't want to make a make, I didn't want to make a commotion about it. Life is short. Let's have some fun. But if you do take it, I have some requirements. Number one, it is yours, no longer mine. Number two, you can do whatever you want with it. Number three, you can give it away. No. <laughs> Number four, you could lose it. No, I'm not going to lose it. Number five, you can try to give it back, but I won't take it. Please accept these terms and don't tell anyone. This is so heartwarming. This is so it is. I felt so happy this oh. entire day. Oh, my God. Someone could have called me an asshole, and I would have been like, I know, it's fine. Dude, <laughs> there are so many possibilities now because now you have a portable um, console and... Um, oh yeah, and like when you, eventually when you play the Legend of Zelda, dude, you can finish that shit on Muni. Oh god, the possibilities are yeah. endless. <laughs> no, totally. But and one of the things I actually want to focus on are co-op games. So next time yeah. you come over, Elisa, we can play Mario Kart together. I actually want to buy the new Kirby game because there's a new Kirby game coming yeah. out that's like four player. Mm -hmm. I heard. And then yeah, so I really want to focus on the co-op aspect because I like I like um I think that this console is one to be shared with friends, as advertised by oh, the commercials. I mean, it, yeah, I was about to say, it is very heavily advertised as a, uh, like, tipi like in Nintendo fashion, just as the Wii, it is a family and friend console. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to get, um, I want to get Sonic Mania, I want to get Stardew Valley, I want to get Bomberman, I want to get Hyrule Warriors. Uh, may I think I'll, I won't pass on Overcooked. Well, maybe I, I might get Overcooked. It depends. I, I already have Overcooked for the PS4, and Elise and I play that very briefly, but I, uh, I, w I might get it again, depending on how I feel, I if have I have overcooked enough money. Now. Oh, you do? I knew it! I, <laughs> I knew you'd buy it! <laughs> do you like it? <laughs> I haven't, like, really played it yet, because I'm really... Okay. I'm balls deep into Nier, but, like, I played it for, like, a hot second for like 10 minutes and i was like oh fuck i love this game <laughs> i know we okay we need to get other people together and we need to play that when it, next let me know when you're going to come over next time and we'll play it okay sounds good <laughs> um i also want to get kirby star allies which is the game i just mentioned that's going to be like four player co-op mm -hmm. mario odyssey and of course the legend of zelda breath of the wild yeah and i will buy more joy cons as well yeah and then so the war you'll, you're going to be set when the next Pokemon comes out, whenever that is. Oh, yeah, and Animal Crossing. I really want to buy Animal Crossing. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, no, that, that was like, wow. I was really surprised about that event today, and I was, like, trying not to tell everyone, but I told my brother, and my brother was like, what the heck? <laughs> like, really? I was like, yeah, dude. Just one of the nicest guys in the world just gave me a really cool gift. And it's, it's really close to... A special day this month in February for me. So that's kind of nice. Yes. So it's kind of like an early gift. Yes. In a way. It is. You should definitely consider it that way. I, I will. I will. Um, yeah. No. So overall, uh, I actually, I, so I bought Mario Kart and I've been kind of playing with that. That's Mario Kart, if those of you who don't own Switch or don't play Mario Kart, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is basically already completed. Like you don't have to play all the races to unlock more races. You just have to collect coins to unlock more carts. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has the whole DLC pack on it. So you get the Mercedes cars, you get like the special Link car, all that stuff. So yeah, it's all in the game ready. Just, you just have to unlock it with coins. Yeah. I'm excited to have this console. And I, I really don't want to give it away. And I, and I won't. So oh, yeah. um, expect some uh, Switch talk from me in the future. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty upset if you sell it, so don't sell it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm at, at this point, no. I'm not going to sell it. <laughs> I'm going to cherish it. I'm going to cherish it for as long as the lifespan of this game, Yay! of this console is. <laughs> for the next, hopefully, two years until they release another Switch. And even if they do, I will not switch over. Yeah. <laughs> Get it? Yay. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Awesome. Um, I think I'm going to get Breath of the Wild in the near future. I don't know yet. I, I'm still trying to wait for the prices to go down, but the the digital versions of the game don't really go down in price. And if someone's listening that knows if Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey will go down in price in the future, or if there's a digital sale going on somewhere, please let me know, because I would like to purchase that game. Let a boy know. That's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yo, yo, let me know though. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We out here. Switch. What's up? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm done. I'm done. The end. And, and podcast. <laughs> no, no. We still have to talk about news. What's been going on in the news? Kaz Hirai stepped down as PlayStation CEO. What's up with that? Which What's is up interesting, with that, Lisa? actually, because I think four months ago, Andrew Howe stepped down, who was the president of... What's the difference between the president and the CEO? Of, of a company? Uh, you know what? That's a good question. If you know what the difference is, please let us know. No, I really don't know. Uh, I thought they were, like, same thing, similar positions, but different types of power. Yeah. It's weird because, um, I mean, CEOs come and go, except for some reason, all of these articles are like, this is a big deal. And I was like, why is this a big deal? Someone tell me why this is a big deal. And... Uh, I didn't realize this. So, uh, so Kaz is the Sony CEO, the Sony, like the whole entire corporation, but he's one of the huge factors in creating the PlayStation and promoting it. And like with Andrew House, like really getting it started. So it's like the two main people who had a major part in Sony's gaming console are like a step down. Yeah. That, that was shocking to me. Yeah. And everyone's telling me to freak out about it. So I guess I am going to freak out about it because this is my console. So. Yeah, no, that's like something you've cherished with you for the you know past. I know. How many years now since you started gaming? So that's like, that's like your thing. I know. It is. It, it's just weird because I don't like at first I was like, I didn't necessarily uh, see this as a big deal because, you know, like I said earlier, but all these like game sites are like oh fuck this is like i guess another interest so i'm gonna talk about this in parallel uh this also comes at a time where console games are kind of at odds with each other and microsoft recently uh put out some statement that they were going to try and um, improve the amount of exclusives that the that their console has for the xbox because you gotta admit jeremy last year PlayStation con- uh PlayStation exclusives were like through the roof. But especially Yakuza. Yeah, there were tons <laughs> there were tons of exclusives and even if the game came out on PC, the chosen console was PlayStation. So now yeah. Microsoft is trying to compete and there's actually quite a few rumors coming out that they wanted to potentially acquire EA and there was even a rumor like five days ago that they acquired Valve, but then the Valve CEO was like, no, they didn't. <laughs> was it Gabe Newell that said that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. No yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear his voice in my head. <laughs> so um, console games are in a world where um, like everyone... Wa- in a world. In a world where every- <laughs> everyone wants to have their exclusive. So... Um, We'll see what the future of a lot of these consoles are. This is going to be an interesting year. I think the consoles, uh, like the inner workings of the management of these console companies are going to shake up. Clearly. Yeah. No, and last year we did say that 2018 was going to be a really big year for gaming. And it still is. And it looks like it's going to explode almost. By the time that E3 rolls around, I think it's going to be huge. I would like to think so. And... Um, honestly, um, I think we need some game unity. <laughs> Absolutely. Then again, we need unity everywhere. So, <laughs> that yeah, I mean, you got to start small though. I, th- I, even though the gaming community is huge, like as far as, as far as the world goes, I, I, I think it's relatively small ish when it comes to like gathering up. Because everyone likes to stick their, to their own clicks and they're, you're always going to have console wars, you know? Oh Yeah. So nothing is united in any sense. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new games coming out. So one of the news that I found out is in April, there's going to be some sort of Kingdom Hearts fan party. Like it's, and it's, it's going to be a, like a fandom party, and it's going to be led by one of the main producers of Kingdom Hearts. And Kingdom Hearts Twitter released a statement that news is going to come out soon about its release. 
you know, the mis mysterious shroud that is Kingdom Hearts, we may potentially, maybe not, probably 50-50 because you know how these people are. Uh, we're going to find out what the release date of Kingdom Hearts is at this fandom event. So, like, the future of the series or the most up or, like, the upcoming game? Three. When did they first show footage? 2015? 2015, probably. So, yeah, how long has the game been in development? I knew people, I mentioned, mentioned this before, I knew people who bought a PS3 just to play Kingdom Hearts 3 because they thought it was going to come out on the console. I did too! I really thought it was going to come out on the PS3, but I don't think any Kingdom Hearts games came out on the PS3. I mean, Kingdom Hearts 1.725 Pi probably came out. Oh, those ones, right, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and then they got remastered for PS4. Yeah, <laughs> and on top of that, they're also available on uh, PSP and PS Vita, I think. So it's like, what? Uh, and it's and like, Nintendo 3DS. Yeah, so it's like you know. <laughs> yeah, if you own a console, you could play play a Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah, just saying. Honestly, well, I, at this point, I don't really care as much as I did before, and it, even when I cared before, it wasn't as much as I do care now, which is not that much. And I keep saying much. <laughs> it's I just. I think that um, it's about time because they need to keep pushing the series forward and you've left all these fans hanging and people can only wait for so long. Dude, I was about to say, so the longer that Kingdom Hearts goes by, the more I really question that game and I try to figure out what's so special about it besides the Disney characters. That's how that's how deprived I I am sort of of this game because I played it consistently uh, when they were they were actually coming out, but now that it like never came out, I'm just kind of like, uh huh. Is this game really that good? <laughs> like, is it even a game? Is it even a game? <laughs> <laughs> or, we will never know. I know. I think like look at this trailer. It's like look at this really cool trailer. So it's just a trailer. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So. Uh, what were you saying? Sorry. Oh no no that I was about to say. So we'll see. <laughs> Or maybe we won't. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You nev you nev <laughs> Life is full of mysteries. Yep. Pretty much. Oh, there's one more There's one more thing uh, that I heard. Uh, have you ever heard of that uh, game Paragon by Epic Games? Yes, I have. So uh, that game has been in beta and, um, you know, in its production prototype stage for a while. And it's, uh, you know, it's just like a typical multiplayer game i think it's like a moba or something and um epic games actually announced that the game got canceled oh wow yeah it got canceled and if you bought anything regarding that game and can show receipts for it you'll get fully refunded this article says uh when they released a battle royale mode in late 2017 um a lot of players dropped paragon hmm when Battle Royale mode was released for Fortnite, there was a, a a reduction of player count in Paragon, and then they started just developing uh, Fortnite more because that's where um, most of the players went to instead of Paragon. They all jumped onto f uh, f uh, Fortnite instead, Got which it. is kind of and then they had to close down Paragon. It's kind of crazy because the same developer was making both games. I know. <laughs> and 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 they dug their own grave. Yeah, a bit. I mean, it kind of it kind of sucks cuz Epic Games is a great studio, but man, ah, it just it just hurts when you really have an ambition and a really good idea and there's already another really good idea that kind of is in the same vein because Fortnite and Paragon were both free to play games. Or I mean, one was well, Fortnite was planned to be free to play. Free to play. I don't. I think it is right now on Steam or something. Oh uh, yeah. Oh I yeah. You can get. You can get. Yeah. You can get it for free on PlayStation. Right. Right. So they're both free to play games. It's just f for two different markets, and everyone wants to be um, players unknown. Player unknown's battlegrounds right now. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think that Paragon was like the good focus they were shifting for. Yeah. Because Paragon really looks like Halo, and Halo has kind of fallen to the wayside since <laughs> everyone just wants to kill each other. <laughs> yeah. And Halo, Halo is a great story, but I don't think right now the focus is sh the focus should be on Halo. I don't think so. Everyone's making their money from PlayerUnknown's Battleground copycats. 
as, as sad as that sounds. And uh, that's all I have for news. Same. Yeah, that's it. I'll talk about more Switch stuff next week. Awesome. So let's get into it. Um, it's the month. Ha ha. So it's the month of February, and this is something that Jeremy and I have um, known for a while. What we're about to reveal. Well, first we're gonna just reveal this no this uh, fact about February, not related to the surprise, but. And if you haven't guessed it already, um, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is our birthday months. Woo woo! Where th- we we're, our birthdays are three days apart from each other. Born same year, same month, same- three days apart. I know, and uh, which is insane. I know. Um, we're turning like the wonderful age of twenty six. I don't know. Um, I always like to name my years by. Bas- basketball players and like um, sports <laughs> players and their numbers, but I don't know anyone with the number twenty six off the top of my head. Well, we're turning twenty six at least. Oh we're getting old. <laughs> my god! <laughs> okay, okay, we're not that. Old. It is not that serious. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting old. Oh, let's put it this way: there are people on YouTube that are older than us that are doing way cooler things. Not to say that this podcast isn't cool, but they're doing way crazier things. Oh, yeah. Honestly, like, it's it's crazy because now people say, like, your life starts when you turn 30, which is like, <laughs> what? I can't even... Pre- Doesn't your life start when you were born? <laughs> isn't that what, Yeah, but, like, it? life really, really starts when you turn 30. I don't even... I, like, I can't even tell you... I can't even... That's four years away, so... I don't want to think about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Jeremy, you can go ahead and reveal mm-hmm. the surprise. All right, Elisa. So we bought games for each other. Yes. That we are going to reveal to each other now. Yes. That we don't even know. We don't know what we bought each other, but um, we're going to talk about what uh, the game that we revealed and also why we chose that game. But I actually kind of want, well, I, I kind of tell you. Uh, I I will uh, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays are exciting. <laughs> I know I'm excited. To, I'm excited to show you this game. Yeah. Okay. So, so this game. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, just to give more context. So, uh, yeah. A few months ago, we decided that for our next birthdays, uh, we were going to give the other person a game, but we were not going to tell them what the game is at all. And there is. There were no rules except for uh, one. The game had the if the game had a single player campaign, it had to be short. And two, um, that person has to have that console platform. So, like for as far as we know, like this game could could be anything. Going off of that, Elisa, the game I chose for you is on Steam. Okay. It is an open world action RPG ish game. Wow, um, I don't know where we're going with this. I like. <laughs> I don't know either. Like that's how it's. That's how I feel like this fits you in a very. Um, it fits you very well in a in a in a game type sense, but also in a what the heck sense. Dude, I, much like Yakuza. Dude, I'm gonna kill you if you got me Just Cause Three. <laughs> no, I did not. I would never do that to you. I would never wish that upon my like, worst enemies. Okay, I, 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 I sudden like I suddenly thought of that game. I was like, oh my god, if Jeremy got no, 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 if no, Jeremy no. complained no. about this game for months and actually got this game for me, I'd be so upset. No, I would not do that to you, Elisa. <laughs> I would not do that to you. I would not. That is horrible. That is a horrible thought. Get that thought out of your head. This is not that game. This game is. This game looks much better. I have not played it myself, okay. but I have been wanting to play it for a very long time. Okay. And I will say, I won't tell you the name. Actually, I will tell you the name, but I want you to look at it first. I'm going to send it to you in our little group chat. Oh, thing, oh okay. On, on Discord. On Discord. Okay. Don't look at the thing below it. Click on the link. Just don't look at the thing below it. Okay. Oh my god, I feel like we've totally talked about this before. This game is called Way of the Samurai 4, dude, and you don't have to play any of the previous games to play this one. Dude, I swear <laughs> to god, I think you told me about this game before. 
I did. Oh my! I was hinting it. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so if you look at the screenshots, I want you to scroll through. Like it looks pretty normal, right? It looks like a, your standard action open world RPG samurai game, right? And then just keep clicking through. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's like a. There's like a. Oh my god! What? <laughs> None of it makes sense, right? <laughs> okay, what the hell just happened? There, I, there's like a wood character of some yep. sort, similar to uh, Tekken's like Mokujin, except not really. They have like a huge ass sword. There's another <laughs> character that's like a flying Oompa Loompa, and then, <laughs> and then there, and I'm on a screenshot, and there's a girl in a bikini on a spinning wheel. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my this god this game i feel like this game fits you very well somehow i don't know why but it just fits you dude <laughs> it's oh god oh, I can't. this game will unlock for you on february 10th your birthday oh my god this is amazing <laughs> dude i i have a feeling we're gonna have some really good times with this game you're gonna tell me everything about it and i want to smile and laugh <laughs> and be like that's not real, but then you're going to be like, it really happened. Uh-huh. And I'll be like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this game, this, yeah, this game is going to be fun for you. Dude, thank you so much, Jeremy. You're welcome. You're welcome. Happy birthday. but Happy early birthday. Happy early birthday to me. Um, this podcast is actually, I have a feeling this podcast is going to, so this podcast is going to come out on your birthday. Oh, sweet. The 13th. Yes, happy early birthday to us. Well, belated if you're listening, actually listening to this podcast. Wow. Yeah, this, or, th- or whenever you listen to this podcast. Exactly. Happy. <laughs> and, and if something bad happens or if you're fr- frustrated with the game, you can shake your head at the camera and say, why, Jeremy? Why did you buy this for me? Oh. Or even if something crazy happens and you're like, what the what the hell? Then you can look at the camera and say, "Why, Jeremy? Why did you buy this for me?" Yeah, it's gonna be a while <laughs> since Yakuza comes out, so our birthday yeah. yeah our birthday games are gonna be hilarious. And like, I'm assuming this game's relatively like not that long in the single player, and you know, hilarity is about to ensue. And like, what the fuck are like majority of these screenshots, Jeremy? <laughs> like, I know, I what, know, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know what is going on <laughs> right now. Who even made this game? <laughs> Uh, Acquire Corp and Ghost Light Ltd. I don't even know who these people are. <laughs> these, those, they, those are those are Japanese developers for sure. Okay. They don't sound like like American developers. Okay, at for all. sure, for sure. Especially Acquire Corp, like in all capital letters. Uh, <laughs> it's like that sounds really Japanese. There's a comment that says, "I have become a human pig." I don't even know what that means, folks. But you're gonna find out. You're gonna find out, Lisa, gonna, and you're gonna tell us. We're gonna find out. But honestly, this game looks hilarious. So. I'm oh obsessed. yeah, no, it looks pure comedy. I want you to tell us all about it when you start <laughs> playing it. And it's your think of it as your uh, your filler fix for yes, Yakuza. Exactly. If this was an anime, this is the filler part. Awesome. But I hope it's a good filler. Yes, I ho- I hope so too. All right. To end this podcast, I have Jeremy's gift. Yeah. And I'm about to post it for you as well in the same spot. Um, so context of my thinking of this gift. Um, so this is a game that actually came out this year that I that we have never talked about together before. But uh, when I saw the description a little bit in December and I found out it was coming out... Um, in January, I was like, oh my god, I think this is actually, like, the perfect, um, cute game that Jeremy would like to play. So, this game's actually cute, so. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, what is this? (gasps) Celeste! I've actually heard of this game! Yeah! Oh, awesome! So, um. Oh my god. As you all know, Jeremy loves his platformers. And he uh, likes really cute animation type things. <laughs> um, and I, f- I saw this game. And when I saw a lot of the, the good reviews and I found out it came out last month, I was like, oh, this is this is the perfect birthday gift. So yeah, no, dude, I'm going to destroy this game <laughs> Not like in a bad way. But like, OK, sweet. No, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I'm so excited to play this. Yes. And that ends 
our birthday bash extravaganza. Thank you guys for listening. That, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. I was really I was really happy that we got to do this actually. Yes. This this was a this was a good idea. This is fun. Um for all you Aquariuses out there, shout out <laughs> shout out to you listeners. You're the best. Shout out we the Shout out to a ten- We the best go sign. Ahead, ahead. <laughs> shout out to a uh, Tinashe, shout out to uh <laughs> who else is an Aquarius? <laughs> oh god. Um this is this deserves a Google search. It's funny because you say Tanache because um, I found out Tanache was an Aquarius, by, you know, by the album title, and I was like, "Why would yeah. this be called Aquarius?" And then I googled it. I'm like, "Oh yeah, there <laughs> you have it. Her birthday is this month." And then I found out right? that one of her like old mixtapes was um, it was called Amethyst, and I was like, "Oh, she's a February birthday." <laughs> yeah. Life. Shout out to uh, Ashton Kutcher, shout out to Oprah Winfrey, shout out to Cristiano Ronaldo, Michael Jordan, Christian Bale, Paul Marley, <laughs> all you famous Aquarius people. Yes, and then shout out <laughs> to you, listener, if you are, and if you aren't an Aquarius, that's okay. <laughs> you sounded so sad when you said that. <laughs> you, that's okay. That's... Like, like, you have a problem with it. <laughs> Come on, Elisa, you don't have a problem, right? No, I don't. But um, that I mean that's what Zodiac's all about. It's about compatibility. So if you aren't an Aquarius, you may know your neighborhood Aquarius and like might be friends with them, might be their enemy, depending on the Zodiac signs and how the stars align. So Woo, happy February. Happy February. Um, yeah, I will. I will definitely play this and let you guys know what's up. Yep. Yeah. Likewise, yes. I will probably start this weekend. Actually, holy crap! I'm not even. Uh, I need to finish near first. <laughs> I need to finish Tomb Raider, but that's not going to happen this weekend. Uh, maybe. I will. I will probably play Tomb Raider this Friday. Yeah. I'll probably make a video and record myself playing Celeste on Saturday, like probably in the Saturday morning or afternoon. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. All right. Sounds good. All right, everyone. Well, actually, when when are, when is Celeste coming to me? By the way. Oh, your actual on my birthday. birthday? Shit, oh, okay. I just, then I can't play it this I just weekend. Realized. Yeah, then I can't play. It. Yeah. I just realized you can only play it out at like uh, President's Day weekend or started President's Day weekend. Arr, okay. Well, uh, maybe on a weekday, I'll try. You can it. literally do it on your birthday. You get it at midnight. Oof! Sweet. Yes. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You're looking forward to playing that. And uh, sorry, I cut you off before. You're going to close this out? <laughs> I don't even remember anymore, but I'll close this out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening to our birthday celebration. This has been the 39th episode of Downtime Podcast. Uh, we will see you all next week. Have a good day. Bye.